Hey everybody, it's Sean and welcome to the Wisdom Workshop Presents Episode 5, Day 3 of Writing the Good Life, which is on composting. Um, this is a huge and rich concept that applies to the three types of people that we made these courses and workshops for. The first type are people that are in some kind of a transition, trying to make a decision about what they're going to go into. So people in transition, this is definitely relevant. Two, people who want to grow into something more in their careers, also relevant. And the third one is people that have creative projects. Um, is also relevant. We look at the life cycle of creative projects, but from ideation, brainstorming, collecting, germinating into sprouting, into growing, into leafing, into fruiting, into deadlining, into turning into shit. Um, so uh, this is really rich and one of my uh, favorite concepts to think about. Um, we gotta give shout out where credit where credit's due. This idea is originally from um, Natalie Goldberg and Writing Down the Bones, page 11, I believe, on composting, which in her uh, sense, page 14 of the 1986 edition, is really about experience in our body. Um, so there's two th ways we can think about composting. And uh, it starts with our experience in a big sense. So even though this says shitty first drafts, I'm actually gonna start here with experience because before any of this, in the beginning, shit happens. And from the basis of shit happening, we're in a position to respond, to process our somatic experience you know what? We're going to start over. This is out of order. In the beginning, there is a sense of somatic experience. We have in our body, but also in our emotions, and in our purpose, shit happens. Um, this, in response, gives rise to us, hopefully, giving a shit. And this response this connects to, in Anne Lamont's wonderful essay and Bird by Bird, shitty first drafts. So I like to say, I just wrote a piece on giving two kinds of shit. The first kind of shit that we have to give is some kind of big care, some big determination. We're writing our pages not for the pages. We're doing the work not for the work. We're doing the work because we love the process, not for the product but for the process of doing it. We're doing it because we care about our growth, for example, or we're caring about someone else, for example. Um, we're doing it to give a gift to someone we care about, for example. We're doing it to clarify because we care, because we're super frustrated and agitated about a certain state of affairs and we're trying to figure out a way around it. We do it in response, actually, to the shit that happens. We also, when we're, so we're in a process of caring about our work, the big determination is what she talks about and what Natalie Goldberg talks about in the, the chapter, the, her essay on composting. So we're not only giving a shit, we're also um, creating shit, we're making shit, we're, we are working to do shit, to try shit that we can then process experience to know where we're going and what kind of plants we are growing into. This is fascinating. One of my uh, graduate advisors was doing his study in comparative epistemology. This is the comparison of um, knowledge systems from um, different traditions in the world, different traditions in history. 
his area of focus was Mesoamerican, indigenous Mesoamerican, what the Spanish called the Aztecs, what they called themselves the Nahua. They had, the, he wrote his piece on, um, the essay he wrote that I remember is called, We Eat of the Earth, and then the Earth Eats Us. Um, and our goal of the ethical, ethical standard in this society was to make ourselves into a good meal for the earth, to make our bodies very digestible in the soil that we've been taking care of. A little bit, a little bit different. This is what I mean by big patience in cyclical time. Big patience in cyclical time, you recognize and realize that there is a process of birth and death that is repeating on a seasonal, yearly level, on a monthly, moonly level, on a daily level, and on the level of um, a human lifetime level, a tree level. Um, there's these motifs, holo holographic motifs. I'm not sure. I might. I need to get these term there's a specific term when something some template of something um stands in for everything else might be holo holography i'll have to look that up when we are entering this process of eating and being eaten at a bodily level of processing the shit that is happening it helps, especially if we're doing the creative work, the last camp here, to have big patience with our work. Instead of getting fixated and attached to the reception of this one thing that I did, I'm seeing this one thing as a certain kind of death, a deadline, a deadline that I've met, put out in the world, someone's ate it and it's turned to shit. It's, but that's not bad. That's, that sh process of making shit um, is, can be fit together with this notion of cyclical time. If you're watching this more or less live, uh, you could say the new moon is actually February 11th, Thursday, February 11th. This is a good time to actually start um, beginning thinking about a new cycle you could jump on at least to get yourself to think in cyclical terms, embrace more of the birth and the death of it. So I'm going to end with a story. Uh, one of my friends who has a really great project that he's working on um, about his philosophy of yoga education um, with Effort and Grace Yoga. And he has been studying, he's been studying yoga philosophy in India for a long time. He has a lot of information. He wants to put it together, but he doesn't know where to start. There's a lot of any big, good, important writing project or any big, important um, lifestyle experimental project is going to take iteration. And, you know, he's had all this information, but he just doesn't know where to start because he doesn't know what it's going to look like when it finishes. And so I basically told him when we were working on his project, hey, man, um, just do a little bit each day. After when you come back from your walk, find a time that you're ready to just um, speak, let it all out. Don't need to know what direction it's going. You don't need to um, worry about how good it is. You're just, or you don't need to figure it out. You don't need to have it. You don't need to know what this final project is going to look like. What goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It doesn't need to be completely finished. When you write day to day, you're just writing sh you're just writing shit and if you're okay with writing shit you're going to be able to write so just a little bit each day don't worry about how what it is let yourself write in a way like you're planting seeds so you can see where it's going so you're tracking you're giving yourself a body of work that you can look at and figure out how these things might be sorted together and how they might work but you don't know where it's all going to go, writing the good life, seven weeks in the craftsmanship of character through reading and writing, an early iteration of um, what we're working on right now. So kind of there's this idea and it might just be worth seeing this cycle. Maybe you've seen this before. 
if we enter into this at the beginning of it and we're willing to die, so to speak, or my buddy Tyler Lindgren, we have a joke that says it's not 10,000 hours, it's 10,000 ego deaths. That's the kind of composting we're talking about. Um, so this is also another helpful way to not rush our results, to know that the fruit drops when it's ripe. And if we truly cultivate the love for our craft and the love of learning and the love of growth, it becomes super easy to fail. In fact, we look forward to failing and eating shit because that shit's going to tell us something about the next time we go back around. Um, that's why I designed these workshops on a seven week cycle um, of, and the week itself is an interesting kind of cycle to play with. So that is, thank you for listening. Episode five of the Wisdom Workshop presents Writing the Good Life on Composting. If you have any questions or if this was interesting or thought provoking for you in any way, I would love to hear it. Um, Hopefully we can all get back to a more natural sense of time. There's a lot actually with this, thinking about this that maybe we'll explore later. Particularly, yes, we have a line of history. We think of a history like this. The Lakotas called this the Black Road. But there is another dimension of time that is more cyclical. I've always seen this as an axis. This is the red road of spirit. Interestingly, Black Elk, where I'm getting this information, said that when the European settlers arrived, the native people got off of the red road that they had been living on and began entering the black road of history. So the notion of time was actually a colonial imposition. At least the notion of sequential linear time as we think about it from beginning to ending. Having more when you get there than when you started. Dangerous. That was in um, somewhat of a cultural colonial idea. Um, the red road, the road of spirit or, mor or morality, ethics. Breath mystery there's something going on here that's bigger that we can't understand we're just doing our best to show up for it and let ourselves write shit and overall if we think that we eat of the earth we eat the earth and the earth eats us we are trying to make ourselves ourselves into more quality um, nutrients for the soil that has been feeding us. So I uh, hope that was enjoyable and insightful and has you thinking about loving yourself in new ways. The fruit drops when it's ripe. You can't, you can't dictate the timeline of your healing from traumatic experience. Um, Nature does not hurry, yet nothing is left undone, from Lao Tzu, the Tao Te Ching. Um, or as we say, read, make, share. Read, make, share. Um, hope this helped. Thank you very much. Until next time, um, where we're going over beginners. No, we're going over bug books and commonplace books next time on the Wisdom Workshop. Thank you.